In this Adobe Illustrator tutorial we're going to make a DVD slick which is the paper wrap around that goes inside a DVD library case. So let's go to new. We're going to select new document uh, profile as print. It gives us CMYK color space. I'm going to leave it as A4 but I'm going to make sure it's in landscape format by clicking this guy here. And we'll give it a name, DVD slick. Click OK. Now I need to save that. Let's go save as. It's already got a name. Make sure it's in the uh, right spot where you want it to go and click save. If you're going to work on it in an older version at home, make sure you select the appropriate legacy format. Otherwise, you can leave it at its default setting for the current version. Don't worry about this stuff here. Just click OK. This layer, number one, is going to serve as our template layer. So I'm going to rename that. It's always good to have meaningful names. Click OK. Quick save, Command S on the keyboard, which I think might be Control S on the PC. Okay, what we've got to do is set our slick up. If you look at the uh, the cover, if you measure the cover of a DVD, it's going to be about 129.5 mils wide and 182 high, and it's going to have a spine down the center of 13 mils wide and 182 high. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the rectangle tool, and I'm going to just click, and I'm going to do, do the spine first. So 13 mils wide, 182 high, and I'm going to click OK. I want to put this right in the middle of the page, so I'm going to get the transform window and type in some numbers. Now A4 in width is 297 millimeters, and half of that is 148 and a half. So with the center reference point selected in the transform box, I'm going to move the center of my spine. I'm going to go 148.5 on the X axis. It sticks it in the middle horizontally. Now A4 is 210 mils high, so I need to go 105 mils for my Y coordinate. And that's stuck that smack bang in the center. So far, so good. Let's save that. Command S. I need to put a panel out here on the right side, that's the same height, but 129.5 mils in height. Oh, sorry, 129.5 mils in width. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this box that we've already got, and I'm going to drag it and make a copy of it to the right. Hold down the Option key. Notice the cursor changes, it's got another little uh, triangle there filled with white that tells me I'm going to make a copy of something. I don't want it to move up and down so I'm going to hold the option key. Uh, no, sorry, I'm going to hold the shift key. I don't want it to move up and down so I'm going to hold the shift key to constrain it and then I'm going to drag. Let's click again and drag. Now it should make a copy this time. and I want to put it right on top of the other one just like that. Let's zoom in and have a look and make sure I got them aligned properly. So I'm going to type Z on my keyboard or I can just select the magnifying glass down here. Just going to draw a little marquee around that and zoom right in and have a look. I still can't quite tell so I'm going to go to outline view. Remember command Y on the keyboard. There it is there. Let's just grab the selection tool and just drag it to the left. Hold down the shift key so it doesn't bounce up and down or you can actually use the arrow keys on your keyboard to nudge it into position. So now I'm pretty happy with where that is. Command 0 will zoom right out so I can see everything. I need to make this right hand box 129.5 mils wide. So I'm just going to drag my mouse over it to select it. I'm going to go back to the transform box and I'm actually going to select the left hand side reference point because I want the box to move from there out that way to the right. I'm going to type the width. It's not 13 mils anymore. It's going to be 129.5. Oh, now 
This has changed the height as well because the little paddle, uh, the little chain has been clicked, which constrains the width and the height. So let's just undo that. Command Z. Click that chain to break break the link. Doesn't have those braces around it anymore, so it's not going to affect the width and the height at the same time. Let's type in 129.5. And hopefully this time only the width will be affected. Okay, that's good. Let's go back to the center, back to our 13 mil spine, and we're going to do the same out to the left. Now another way of doing that, we can actually make a copy of that numerically. So we can go Object, and we can go Transform. We're going to go to Transform, Move, and we get this numeric dialog box pop up good idea to turn preview on. This time we're going to move it to the left a distance of 13 millimeters so I'm going to go minus 13 and I'm going to go copy. I don't actually want to move it I want to make a copy of it so it's just click copy and it does that. Now that'll be precisely aligned there let's just zoom in and have a look. Yep beautiful. Command 0 to zoom out again. This time we need to go back to the transform box and make this box 192.5 wide. So we're going to select the right hand side reference point this time because we want to move the width of this box to the left using this as our reference point. And we're going to type in the width of 129.5 and that'll shoot that out to the left. I'm just going to select nothing and there's our template. If I go Command Y you'll actually see we've got some lines happening there and so far that's pretty good. Now what I need to do uh, which would be handy is to actually pull some guidelines in here at the moment. So I'm going to turn the rulers on to do that because that's how you get guidelines. Let's go View, Rulers, Show Rulers and if I click in a ruler and pull I can pull out a guideline so I'm just going to put that guideline there like that. Sometimes it's handy just to zoom in while you do this. So let's just zoom in. It's not quite in the right spot. So let's go Selection Tool. Just grab it and drag it. Okay, it's locked. So we go to View. We go to Guides. We just untick that to unlock it. Then I can move it across like that. While I'm here I'm going to pull a guide, a horizontal guide from the top ruler. So click in the top ruler and pull down a guide like so. Command 0 so I can see. Make sure you use 0 not the O key because that will open. Z for zoom down the bottom right hand corner and I'm going to put in a couple of guides there. Pull one down from the top for a horizontal guide and one from the left like that. Command 0 again. I'm going to put a couple more guides in here because this is going to be my fold marks. Let's move that out of the way. Pull a, a vertical guide from the left ruler. Stick it right there. And another one is here. Just there. So there, I've got some guidelines. If I go to Command Y and turn on preview mode you're going to see where those blue lines are. And uh, I'm happy with where they are so I'm just going to lock them. So I'm going to go to View, Guides, and Lock Guides. What I need to do is actually make some crop marks because these rectangles here represent the trimmed finished size. Once the thing's been printed and they guillotine it and cut it, this is going to be the trimmed size. So what I'm going to do is put in some marks for them. So I'm going to get the Line tool. I'm going to make sure I don't have any fill. I'm going to make some stroke. Let's get some stroke happening. Uh, black will be fine. So let's just uh, click our eyedropper on that. 100% black. We don't have any other colors in there. And I'm going to make sure that that's a fairly thin line. So I'm going to go up here to stroke. It defaults to one point. I'm going to set that to 0.25. So a quarter of a point of stroke. So it's nice and thin. Uh, the other way of getting at stroke, you can do that through the window stroke which throws up the palette for it and you've got a bit of control over the uh, shape of the ends of the line I'm not going to worry about any of that stuff just going to set it for quarter of a point 
Now I'm just going to click over here somewhere and draw out a horizontal line. Let's just start from over here somewhere and I'm going to hold down the shift key, draw out a horizontal line and let go on the right hand side about. It's a bit hard to see what's going on with those guidelines so I'm going to go up to view, guides, hide guides or I can use the command and the uh, colon key. So there's our first crop mark. While it's still active, I'm going to go to the selection tool, hold down the option key because I want to make a copy, hold down the shift key, click, I might have to click again just to select it. I've got the option key and the shift key and I'm going to drag down to the bottom about there somewhere. I'm going to have to zoom in to do this precisely, so I'm going to let go, go Z for zoom. I can either turn my guides back on by going command colon, there they are there. Uh, it might be handy to be in outline mode, so command Y, outline mode. I'm going to get the uh, selection arrow, which is V on the keyboard, type V, and I'm just going to hold the shift key because I don't want this to move from left to right, but I want it to move up and down, so hold the shift key and then pull straight up. There we go. Just make sure you get it right on the line. Oops. I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm going to drag this thing up so it goes onto my guide like that. Let go. Command zero to zoom out. It's going to click anywhere to deselect. Now if I go command Y back into preview mode and command colon to hide the guides you'll see that I've got a couple of crop lines there. Let's do a vertical one this time. I'm just going to turn the guides back on again, so command colon. Let's do a vertical one, grab the line tool. You could use the pen tool as well, that would also work. Let's do that pen tool. Make sure our stroke is set to a quarter of a point and we don't have any fill turned on. I'm just going to start on a point and click on that line on the, on the guide. I'm going to click. I'm going to hold the shift key down this time because that'll constrain it vertically and click on a point down here somewhere. And there's the two handles of the line that I've just drawn. And I'm going to go and select none, so Shift Command A to select nothing. Let's just check, make sure that works, so Command colon and there's our line. Let's just zoom in, make sure it's in the right spot. I'm going to go Command Y to get myself outline mode and I'm just going to nudge this line into position using the select tool. So let's just uh, click on it to make it active. Let's try the keyboard increments, they're too big so I'm just going to just drag it. Hold down the shift key as well while I do that. Just drag it in the right spot. Might fix this one while I'm there. We're only talking fractions of a millimetre so it doesn't really matter. Command zero. I'm going to duplicate this line all the way over this side. I'm going to hold down the shift key. I'm going to hold down the option key to make a copy and I'm going to click on it and I'm going to drag it. So this is with the shift key to constrain it from moving up and down and the option key to make the copy. Just drag it right in the right spot. Let's have some uh, fold marks. So while that's active I'm going to actually move backwards this way. So shift, option, click, oops, again, there we go, and drag right to there. Do the same thing again. When I click on it, it'll probably deselect it, so I'll have to do it twice. Uh, click, click again, drag. Still got my finger on the shift key and the option key. Stick that in the right spot. Now these two lines here, they're just solid lines. If I go Command Y, I can see there, uh, let's just select nothing. They're just solid lines like everything else. It would be nice to have them dotted lines. So I'm just going to drag my mouse across them with the Select tool and highlight those. Let's go to our Stroke palette. Um, if it's not open, just go up to Window and select Stroke. You've got this thing called Dashed Line down here, so let's click that. 
and at the moment it's going to do a 12 point line and by default it'll make a 12 point gap which is probably a bit much so it's going to go for 4 point I don't have to actually type the gap in unless I want a different size gap if I wanted a 2 point gap or a 3 point gap then I'd do that or I could actually change it and have 5 point and 7 point or whatever let's just stick with 4 point uh, and that should do the trick there just select nothing shift command A and you can see that we've got ourselves oops, just go magnifying glass we've got some fold marks which are dashed lines command zero now the other thing is we need to put a three millimeter border right around this thing because we need to have bleed space if you've got a Photoshop file sitting say on the cover here you need to actually hang it over the edge by three mils to make up for inaccuracies when it gets guillotined hopefully when they cut it they'll cut it right on the crop mark lines but you never know they might uh, miss it by a mil on one side so it, just to be safe you give them three mils of bleed space so what we're going to do we're going to make another uh, rectangle that fits right around the whole thing that's going to be offset by three mils now we know we've got 129 and a half mils on that side and we've got 129 mils uh, and a half sorry 129 and a half that size and 13 in the middle so that gives us 272 mils between our crop marks horizontally and 182 mils high so what we've got to do is we've got to add three mils horizontally on the left and the right so what we do we go to uh, 272 and we add three for the left and three for the right so that's six in total so we, we've got to have 278 mils wide so let's go back to our rectangle tool and I'm just going to click anywhere and do this 278 wide now 182 high is our cropped finished size and we need to add a total of six mils for our three mil bleed top and bottom so let's add six mils onto 182 188 click OK now we need to stick that into the center as well so back to the old transform window make sure you got center reference point and if you recall halfway across an A4 page is 148.5 on the x-axis and 105 on the y-axis and as you can see that stuck that smack bang in the center of the page and put our three mils bleed right around the edge now we don't want any stroke on this thing we actually want white fill to hide everything so I'm going to go over here and go stroke none select fill and I'm going to fill it with white so up here let's go and fill that with white and try again okay something weird's going on let's go to the swatches okay that's better now if I select none shift command A what we're left with is our crop marks in all four corners and our fold marks and that uh, white box is actually hiding the intersection of the crop marks so they're slightly offset so that's the way you do crop marks let's go back to our layers function 7 and we're going to padlock that and we're going to save the whole thing because that took us a while to do that we don't want to lose all that